So I quite literally just finished filming a huge project about the war collusion that I am working on. And then all of a sudden my computer complains that there is no more storage left. So now I have to scramble to make a different video for you today so that I can keep my daily upload schedule because of course the other video was planned to go out today but I need one more day at least to get that finished because of the whole hiccup situation that I just got thrown into unwillingly. Now the topic that I want to talk in this video about is purgeable storage on macOS or more specifically the situation that you deleted hundreds of files, maybe hundreds of gigabytes of storage, but nothing really changes and you can't access your storage, you can't find where your storage is. Now that's exactly what just happened to me and which also is the reason why I am not able to produce the finished version of the other video but let's jump over to the screen and have a look into what might be going on there and how you may be able to resolve this. Now what you can see here on the screen is the file structure of what I'm doing right now. And if we go down here to overall the Mac and then go to Macintosh HD and do our finder, so Command and I is the shortcut for that, you can see right now I have an available capacity of 18.45 gigabytes. However, I just deleted hundreds of gigabytes worth of files, which should be able to give me way more storage free than this. And of course, I also need that storage because I am currently working on a relatively huge project. And if you look down here, the trash actually doesn't really hold that much. These are just test recordings that I was doing before starting this. So I can empty this out again and there's literally nothing changes with this 18 gigabytes and also with the number down here, you can see that as well. Now that was quite strange and I actually tried logging out of my account. I also tried restarting my Mac, but nothing really seems to change that aspect. Now I also tried to run the first aid in the disk utility. So essentially starting the disk utility from the utilities folder in the applications or with a program like Alfred or Spotlight, you just search for disk utility. And then right here, you can click the first aid button. And if you do that while you're running the system at the same time, you will actually be locked out of your system for a good chunk of time, which is something that they tell you about but at the same time it's quite annoying when you want to just get more storage free again so that you can actually start using it. That however also didn't change my situation. Then I additionally found that this might be going on with local backups of the time machine. So I tried to list the time machine backups with this command right there. I even tried to disable the local, uh, local snapshots. That didn't change much. And I also had this line right here, which I found on a Stack Overflow page, which essentially just deletes all the different snapshots. And now if I go back and look at the snapshots, you can see there's nothing there anymore, except for this arc agent, which might become interesting in a moment. However, long story short, once more, if I open up Finder, you will see that even all of those things still didn't change things because of course I already ran these things before starting to make this video. So all of these commands also didn't really help. However, I did think about what I usually see when I open the information on my hard drive. And that is that when I go into the MacBook Pro right here and my internal hard drive and go command I, that usually there's something here which is called purgeable memory. Now, you can also find more about your storage when you go to the Apple logo at the top about this Mac, and then you go to storage, and then you can also see some information right there. However, once more, it just shows 18 gigabytes free and 499 available, or theoretically available on the hard drive. Now, opening up this management thingy here, it just doesn't really help much because it just tells me where storage is used, but it doesn't really help me to clear it out. Now, the next thought that I came up with was that, hey, I actually purchased a storage management application about half a year ago, which I like to use to kind of visualize what storage is available for me on my computer, or what rather, what storage is used by which folder structure. 
and it just helps you way better to understand what is going on with your storage, where things are stored, how big they are, and especially how big those folders are from like the parent folder all the way down to the children so that you have a bigger understanding or better understanding about what might be going on in your own file structure so that you can make a smarter decision about files that you might wanna move to an external drive or just delete altogether. Now that program is called Daisy Disk, as you can see here on the screen, and it will provide you a bit of a pie chart in a way that goes out and shows you a lot about your storage and how you are using your folder structure. Now I will have a link down below in the description about this, but essentially let's run this application. And there we go, Daisy Disk. And now we have our disks right here. And of course I have my Mac OS HD and then I have my Google Drive, which essentially also uses storage. Right now it's about 17 gigabytes of caching but we can now scan the Macintosh HD, which is my internal drive, my macOS hard drive, if you will. And once that is finished scanning, we'll have a look at what is actually going on here and where did all my storage go and why is it not clearing out? And by the way, if you're wondering why I also have this microphone right here, this is the Rode NT-USB Mini. That is because for one, I am currently testing this microphone for a review and second, the room that I'm currently recording in is extremely echoey. So if I were to use something else, it might not come as, uh, out as good. However, I don't even know how well this picks up my voice versus the echo in this room. So we'll see in the editing, I guess. Now this process is finished. I can just move this over or make it bigger so that we can see stuff properly. And what you can see here now is that overall, the system uses 481 gigabytes of storage, which is relatively close to what we have been gathering. And now you can go here and you find what folders are using that storage. So for example, if I go here, we have the applications folder and you can see my applications like Premiere Pro are using a significant portion of storage, altogether 62 gigabytes. Then over here, we have the users folder. And of course, I am the only user of this. So that completely translates over to my own usage of this computer. And then we have different folders on this structure. And most notably, my work for YouTube in the content production folder, because that right now has about 100 gigabytes in it. And that, of course, is the video project that I just wanted to finish, but couldn't because there is not enough storage on my computer. Now, what you can do in this application, you can, of course, drill down into these bits so you can actually see what is going on and you can just move closer and closer to what you want to learn about. And of course, there you can also navigate and click with a right click on this, preview those files, show in Finder, open in Terminal, or move it to the collector. And to move it into the collector or also drag it into the left corner at the bottom right here, means that you are essentially preparing this to be deleted. Now, I obviously don't want to delete this project. However, what I did find when I ran this program is that we also have this area which is called hidden space. And hidden space apparently is purgeable space, snapshots, other volume stuff, and still hidden. And it's kind of weird because it's only using 100 gigabytes, but it's purgeable space of 103 gigabytes and a snapshot of 70, 97 gigabytes. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I do 100% know that purgeable space is the space that Apple or Mac OS should be deleting by itself whenever you are clearing out your trash, or at least whenever you need new storage. And it should show up as free storage on your computer, but it doesn't. So what I can do now, click on the purgeable space, because of course that's already purgeable, then we can find some information there, which basically says this space is taken by time machine, temporary backups and system cache. No action is required. The system will automatically purge this, but you can also purge it now with dragging and dropping it into the collector. So now I have dropped this into the collector because I want to get rid of this purgeable space as of right now. And I think that that's really cool that Daisy Disk gives me this option. Now I'm gonna just click the delete button and it's going to show me a bit of a countdown right here. And now we are going to reclaim the purgeable space and it's almost done. 
And once this is done, let's cross my fingers, or I'm going to cross my fingers, that it is actually going to delete all of those files that I want to be gone. Now, in the meantime, let's open up the Finder. We are still at 17 gigabytes use storage or free storage and nothing about purgeable space, nothing new happening here. So that seems to be not quite the case of what is being used right here, but maybe it is about this Haystack Arc agent, which in my case is a backup software that I am running on the system, but I'm not necessarily sure why this would take up any space in this kind of way. So maybe I just have to also delete that, but I even can't delete that. Now I guess I have to call back my horses a little bit here and uh, reconsider a couple of things. And this is probably one of the best examples of making or trying to make a video in the moment about something where I think I have understood something, but then it turns out it doesn't work the way that I would expect it to work. However, I would have had to film the process to actually be able to show you. Now, Daisy Disk was incredibly helpful in terms of finding out that the snapshots or much rather the purgeable space and all of those are existent and they for sure were part of the issue. However, I could not delete the snapshot from Haystack Software Arc backup inside of this Daisy Disk because it would not let me because it's a backup from a different application and that backup would have had to be deleted with Arc Backup. Now I tried to go into Arc Backup and get that application to finally delete its damn snapshot to get my storage free again, but that didn't work either. But I did find another program called Disk Drill and that is actually an application that I also have used in the past specifically to recover files from SD cards when those kind of fail. So this is a program that I downloaded years ago probably also and have been using ever since, but now it was really, really handy because there's actually one maybe strange feature that helped me now get my storage back. And as you can see, as of right now, I have 15 gigabytes available, but that has everything to do with the fact that there's a program currently running which is erasing data from the free disk space or trying to erase the free disk space. Basically, this application once more wasn't able to delete the snapshot from Arc Backup or at least I haven't found a option for that. But since I last checked that application out, they added a whole bunch of cleaning applications or cleaning features. And one of those features is to be able to basically encrypt or delete free disk space so that there is nothing left to be reconstructed. And that feature in particular is the one that I just started in the hopes of this basically filling up my space and then triggering the purgeable or the removal of the purgeable space by macOS itself. And honestly, I did not quite expect it, but it ended up working. Now this here is the interface of the disk drill application. And as you can see, there are a bunch of extra tools right here. And of course you have the data recovery at the top as well. And the one that I use now is called Erase Free Space. And I basically just chose my hard drive and then I click the Erase Free Space button. And basically this tries to fill up the space as much as possible with randomness and then delete all of that again so that it would be once more cleared out so that there is just nothing left over. And now when I go back into my finder, I finally have 122 gigabytes of free storage. And if I go back into disk drill and I reload this here, you can see the snapshots are empty. The hidden files are just about 2.4 gigabytes. And going back to my overall disk usage and I rerun the scan there, I have noticed that I now have my space back in my control. 122 gigabytes is much more than what I just deleted. And it's kind of making more sense now based also on the information that Daisy Disk shows in the charts if I am not counting the hidden space because I am about using 300 gigabytes in my personal storage and about 60 gigabytes in the applications. So in total, it should be about 360 plus the system of macOS itself. That makes way more sense now. 
and it is what I would be expecting. So long story short, making a impromptu video is not really that easy. Also, learning how to purge my disk space on macOS has been quite helpful. I'm sure there are alternative ways of filling up your space. And I think I even saw someone in a thread on Stack Overflow having a kind of like a command line, basically filling up a folder with files until the computer is full so that it is triggering that purge function so that that free space or that space is finally freed up again for you to use. Now, I don't even know why exactly that got triggered, why the purgeable space was not shown as free space and just freed up by itself, not even by a reboot of the system. But finally, I found this solution and I hope this video was helpful in some kind of way for you as well. I think that Disk Drill and Daisy Disk are two incredible applications. They are super helpful when you lose files with Disk Drill or if you just wanna have a overview of what is going on on your file system for a minimal price for Daisy Disk. Now there are certain features available that are similar to Daisy Disk inside of Disk Drill, which I also just found out because that's not really how I was used to this whole thing. But if you go to clean up in Disk Drill, choose your file or even just a folder structure and then click the start scan, you will actually end up having a similar view of your data. It's not as pretty as Daisy Disk and the application Disk Drill, if you wanna have the full feature set, is way more expensive than Daisy Disk, but you have that feature set available as well. And it might even be in the free version that I am not sure about, but you can of course try that out. And I will also have a link to Disk Drill in the description down below. Now I hope this video was interesting in some kind of way, even though it was very different from what I wanted to publish. Now I'm gonna get back to producing the video for tomorrow and of course also publishing this video. So with all of that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, clear out your storage, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.